Thanks for the introduction. My talk today is on lip reading, which means understanding what someone is saying only by watching their mouth. Take a look at this video. And you can see that it's clearly a challenging problem. One of the reasons it's more challenging than regular speech recognition is that the words that sound different can look the same on the lips. Suppose you say, as I walk in the park, I hear my do dog bark. The only way you can differentiate between park and bark is the context. So you walk in the park, but you hear your dog bark, but your dog cannot bark. Then wh why is lip reading useful? It can be used to dictate messages to a machine in a noisy environment or for reading conversation at a distance and a reading archival silent films. We tackle the problem of lip reading using a deep learning model, which requires a large data set to train from. First, we're going to talk about how this data set is generated, and then the model and how it's trained, and finally, how well it works. One of the reasons that nobody's been able to lip read natural sentences is because there hasn't been any suitable data sets around. All of the existing data sets are restricted to small vocabulary and a small number of speakers. So to train a model that can generalize, we need to build a new data set that's orders of magnitude larger, both in terms of vocabulary size and the number of speakers. To build a data set, we start from these TV programs, the BBC News, the Question Time, the Newsnight, etc. Why? Because these videos contain everything you need to generate the data set, from the lip movements to the spoken words in the closed captions. Moreover, these videos are ideal as they have a wide range of speakers, which is important because we want to do speaker independent lip reading. To train the model, we need to align the lip movements with the text, and we do this in two stages. Aligning the text to the audio and aligning the video to the audio, also known as the lip sync error correction. By doing these two things, we find a precise alignment between the lip movements and the words being said. Here's the summary of the pipeline, and what we want to get out of the video is the faces tracked and the spatial landmarks detected so we know where the mouth is. And we do this using off-the-shelf off the vision packages. Next, what we need from the audio and the subtitles is the timestamp for each word, which we get by aligning the audio to the subtitles. We use a tool called P2FA to force align the audio and the subtitles, and we double check this alignment by running a commercial speech, speech recognition system. One remaining problem we have is the lip sync error correction, and for this, we use a lip sync CNN called SyncNet. I'll now show you a video in our data set before and after the processing. Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. They are the most unlikely Premier League champions, but the 5,000 to one outsiders have pulled off one of the most unlikely sporting achievements to win the Premier League. Leicester City fans celebrated through the night after their close decisions have been specifically ruled out of judicial scrutiny. So in relation to those decisions, the court has said decisions on the battlefield are not matters uh, to be so who's considered by being one of the most powerful if not the most powerful brands not just in football not just in soccer but across the whole these are some of the faces that appear in our data set the large number of speakers here help the trained model to generalize better to unseen identities and our data set contains over 100,000 sentences and over 17,000 different words. And we split this data into train validation and test sets by broadcast date so that we don't test on the videos seen during training. 
Having finished the dataset construction, now I'll introduce the model and how to train the network using this dataset. The general architecture is an encoder-decoder model where the network reads one input at a time, which could be lip movements, and produces one output at a time, in our case, characters. In fact, we are going to consider two inputs, the lip movements and the audio. On the input side, we have the watch subnetwork that takes the lip regions and generates an encoding, and also a listen module which attends to the audio. And on the output side, the spell module that reads the encodings and outputs one character at a time. Putting it all together, we get this architecture, and we have a dual attention mechanism that can operate over the visual input only, the audio only, or both at the same time. Training the model requires a number of tricks. We use a curriculum learning strategy where we start training the model with one word and let it grow to two, three words, etc. And we find that this makes the training to converge faster and produce less overfitting. Also, given speech is a much stronger signal than lip motion to stop the audio from dominating, we randomly drop one of the input channels. We also apply some noise during training to help the network become more tolerant to noise. Now, I'll move on to how well we can read the lips using this model. These are the sentences decoded using lips only, without the audio. In the video, you can see it gets some pretty complex sentences correct. Which is why the president of the polling council... According to the latest figures from the Office for National Statistics... The no-confidence vote in Parliament today... ...could be wiped out across the continent. The decision-making process before the invasion and during the conflict. He was arrested on the border between Ukraine and Poland last month. Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. But David Cameron has admitted tonight that is a very difficult situation. And you know what they say about people with small... Manchester City travelled to Paris in the Champions League this evening. West Wales and the South West as well as Western Scotland. We have to look at whether it works for the UK or not. The government will pay for both sides. I don't think that this is the right step to take. Especially on the most important decision. The process has been very reliable. We use a metric called word error rate to measure the performance. And uh, for example, take a look at this video. The Prime Minister is at a European Union summit. Here he said the Prime Minister is at a European Union summit. But the model recognized the Prime Minister is at its European Union summit in. The system gets two out of the nine words wrong, which equates to a 22% word error rate, despite getting the message across. So these are the results on the test set. The average word error rate is 50%, which is a lot better than human professionals who get over 70% wrong. 50% might sound high, but as you just saw, word error rate is a harsh measure, and S is missing or a wrong tense gives a high word error rate, but it's still often comprehensible. Now, with the audio, you can see that the visual cues do really help to improve the performance in the way it helps the humans too. Google Cloud Speech API gets 22% of the words wrong, whereas our audio-only model gets 17.7% 17 .7 wrong trained on our data set. The audio and lips model gets 13.9% wrong, which represents a significant improvement. Although the audio only model performs substantially worse with noise at 37%, the performance boost 
with the lips is more visible in noisy conditions. To conclude, I've introduced a system that can lip read complete sentences using a character-based open world model. That's all I have the time for now. Thanks for listening. Time for a few questions. Thanks for the great work. I have a question regarding the data set. Um, you say it's uh, independent of the individuals. So how, do you, how did you make sure that the same people do not occur in train and in test? Oh, some people do appear in both train and test sets, but it's such a large number that we don't, it's thousands of speakers. So we don't believe it matters very much. Uh, hi, cool work. Um, I wonder, just for fun, so these data sets, I believe they were all British TV. Did you try to run it on American TV to see if it also predicts well? No, we haven't tried that, but it, it would be an interesting experiment. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, uh, great work. I have a quick question. So for prediction of your lip sentences, how much context do you need? Do you need the entire sequence for your training and prediction? Or is it more similar to an online system where you can still predict with not a lot of context? So do you mean uh, all, all the system sees is that, that one sentence, but you mean within that? Or? Like in future, do you need to know what's the future also? No. No? So it's like similar to an online system? Uh, yes. Okay. 